transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Let's lift our hands to heaven and bless his name tonight. Father, we honor you. Bless his name. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Are you praying? Father, we thank you. Let it be in your heart to give him thanks. Let it be in your heart to give him praise. You deserve my worship. You deserve my everything. Except the Lord built a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city, the Bible declares that the watchman watcheth but in vain. Vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Can you declare his faithfulness? Lord, thank you for life. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. I thank you because of your wisdom. Thank you because of your power. Thank you because of your grace. Hallelujah. Now thank him for tonight. Lord, speak to me. My heart is opened. Is someone praying? Let your word come with fire. My heart is open to receive. My heart is open to be blessed. Hallelujah eh. Hallelujah eh. Hallelujah eh. Hallelujah eh. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for tonight. We do not take it for granted the gift of life and your faithfulness over our lives, over this ministry. And the wonderful things that you continue to do. We remain humbled. And we tremble at your word. We tremble at your faithfulness. We lay it to heart to give you thanks. We are not ungrateful. We lay it to heart to give you thanks. We lay it to heart to give you thanks. For the wonder working power of your spirit. For protection. For safety. For grace. For leadership. For the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we thank you. Let the Lord and Him alone remain glorified. And tonight our hearts are open to hear and to learn. Speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be with us again. And um, I'm very excited to be here for many reasons. Thank you. Hallelujah. Reason number one is because I love you. That is the first reason. I really do. Reason number two is that I remain passionate about your transformation. And every time we meet, we never remain the same. Hallelujah. Yes. Number three is because of the events that follow from tonight, tomorrow by the grace of God we're going to be graduating our school of ministry students here they have labored and Friday will be a miracle service again so it's a full package all through and your commitment 
is to be very intentional about every one of the days from tonight tomorrow um, friday be very intentional no assumption no carelessness let your spirit be attuned to what the holy ghost is doing hallelujah praise the name of the lord i have a message tonight that is burning in my spirit and i hope that god will grant us grace to learn the only way we rise in this kingdom is through our encounter with the spirit of the living god and our encounter with his word the word and the spirit remain the principal channels for the growth and the maturity of believers hallelujah every time the word of god comes with the breath of the spirit upon it it does many things number one it brings enlightenment what does it mean to be enlightened to be illuminated that means the areas of darkness haziness confusion in your life is immediately replaced with wisdom hallelujah imagine that you have a visitor that every time he comes around because of the antecedents you know that he always leaves something with you you know just to appreciate you will you be happy seeing such a person absolutely like my wonderful children now not you i mean my children babies now hallelujah i've missed them so much and every time i come around they know that there has to be a package that is tailor made for them so they anticipate my coming because they love jesus they love me but because they love what happens when i'm around when the word of god becomes a profitable spiritual resource to you you will tremble at the word every time you see the word of god coming imagine that a messenger is bringing something for you and it is always good news news of wisdom news of illumination listen what i am teaching you for as long as you are alive and you remain in the faith you will never outgrow this understanding this is the secret that continues to produce champions in the kingdom those who have ignored it will spend their lifetime paying for it it is always an encounter with the word then an encounter with the spirit of god that union producing wisdom producing grace and then you keep scaling heights in the spirit from one level of glory to the other hallelujah so let's look at um, a few things tonight the goal of tonight's teaching is to help contribute to our spiritual maturity and i hope and pray let me start it this way i hope and pray that we we are still ever passionate as far as the word of god is concerned listen listen carefully your passion for the word and your passion for the ministry of the spirit cannot afford to be seasonal are we together now if your passion for the word of god is seasonal you are already in trouble man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the lord that means the word of god is more than just an instrument for victory your life your living literally depends on it the bible never said man shall not succeed by bread alone he said man shall not live that means if you ignore the word of god eventually your life will be part of the things that will be used to pay that price not just your success if all you will lose for ignoring the word of god is just success and victory that is affordable there are people who are not interested in being successful but the bible is saying even your life can be a victim of ignoring the word of god remain ever passionate there is no other way we rise in this kingdom there is no other way we excel in this kingdom there is no other way we become victorious in this kingdom there is no other way we are used in this kingdom we cannot ignore the word of god and expect our lives to continue to move as if nothing wrong were happening ignoring the word of god is not just wrong it is sin 
this is more than a manual for profitable living it contains the truths that makes for life and godliness are we together i thought it was important to charge our hearts because you see believers sometimes maybe because of the things that happen around our lives it's easy to slip into the carelessness of ignoring the word and you just assume at least i am going to church listen going to church is wonderful but it is very very different from being passionate about god you can be in church congratulations but in addition to being in church being in church you must have a personal desire and hunger for the word of god not for church activities hallelujah second corinthians chapter 3 from verse 18 the bible says now the lord is that spirit second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 now the lord is that spirit he says 17 and he says where the spirit of the lord is just back down one verse he says there is liberty now the lord is that spirit there are many spirits that hope and desire partnership with men for instance demon spirits there are demon spirits that also seek the bodies of men there are demon spirits that also seek partnership with men but the bible says now the lord is that spirit that spirit that brings liberty that spirit that builds it says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty verse 18 says but we all how many so when it has to do with the matters of the spirit it affects all not some everyone should be a profitable recipient of the ministry of the spirit but we all with open face beholding us in a glass what are we beholding the glory of god to what end the bible says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of god it is god's desire that my life and your life become and remain expressions of his glory listen the faith life is not just a life to serve god as wonderful as that is the faith life is also a life that demonstrates the fullness of the glory of god upon a believer now when you study the whole frame of the knowledge of god the entire scope of the believer's journey there are about six or seven areas that really make the entire bible or the entire christian faith if you study theology listen very carefully you will come across these six or seven areas these are the areas that define the jurisdiction of our relationship as far as the kingdom is concerned number one when you study theology just listen just this is not my teaching you now study theology itself the word theos means the trinity god so theology is the study of god the very nature of god that is the first thing you are exposed to from scripture in the beginning god you study god the triune nature who is he what is the whole idea of the trinity are we together now yes very very important and then when you study god the second the second area of study is called anthropology the study of man man as a unique expression of god's creation more than plants and animals man is the zenith the apex of god's creation that everything that was created was literally created because of man anthropology who is man what is man why is god interested in this species called man why can't he do away with us and upgrade lions and use them what is it about men that is interested in are we together now very very important 
the third thing you study is called christology christology means the study of christ jesus christ as messiah and it now extends to the entire span of redemption who is jesus why did he come to what end are you seeing the progressions now god man extends to the fall now the revelation of jesus who is he why did he have to come why didn't angel michael or gabriel at least they've proven to be faithful why were they not delegated to just come why did he have to be the incarnate of god to come on earth christology are we together now yes you have to study that to understand christ as messiah to understand christ as the anointed of the father what was his purpose what did he come to do now that describes the entire plan of redemption you now know why he had to die the death of the cross why he had to be resurrected on the third day he ascended to heaven he came back and now still continued his teaching with the apostles the next area that you cover is called pneumatology pneumatology is the study of the ministry of the holy spirit because we see that after the ascension of christ the next personality that was given to the church as jesus said is the holy spirit and from that time till today it remains the dispensation of the holy spirit are we learning now so pneumatology who is the holy spirit why is he here why was god interested in ensuring that we receive of him i have many things to tell you now he said but he cannot bear them how be it when he the spirit of truth is come are we still bible students he says he shall guide you into all truth now you begin to know the holy spirit his person then you begin to know the dimensions of the holy spirit according to isaiah 11 the sevenfold dimension the spirit of dominion the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord you notice the sevenfold spirits are divided into four because four is the number of the operation of god four gospels four rivers four dimensions as ezekiel measured you see that now now you are studying the holy spirit you learn how to partner with him you learn how he works then you now go to issues like the gifts of the spirit first corinthians what are they how do they work then the next that you study is called ecclesiology ecclesiology comes from the word ecclesia that means the church because christ in partnership with the holy spirit birthed the church the church that mysterious entity the only entity mandated to represent the purposes of the kingdom in its fullness ecclesiology now you are studying man but not just man as anthropos that species you are studying man as a product of what the word of god and the holy spirit has achieved in him are we together when we study ecclesiology this is where now we begin to talk about the subject of kingdom advance why did god have to go through that labor to save man to anoint man and to commission him man is no longer a weak person who is in need of a savior man is now a witness man is now an ambassador in partnership with the holy spirit mandated across different strata of human activities to reveal christ are you learning now and then you can now study other aspects like um eschatology eschatology now is the study of the end times the prophetic dimension of scripture where are we going at least we have an idea of where we were coming from but where are we going the bible says if our hope is only in this life we are of all men most miserable i'm showing you the jurisdiction of the growth and the study of scripture for a believer so that when you are studying scripture or as we teach 
when you talk about believers being grounded and matured these are the dimensions that they must be exposed to if they may not have to teach it as pneumatology um, anthropology but that all the topics together eventually expose you to these dimensions god man jesus redemption the holy spirit the empowered man in christ the agenda of the kingdom life after now until you have this understanding you cannot say you are matured no spiritual maturity is not just gauged in the longevity of your time in church that is profitable but on its own it does not make you mature you have to be able to understand these things so what do you know about god listen what you know about god matters because in the revelation of god is the revelation of man if you do not know god it's like trying to see yourself and then you don't look at the mirror are we blessed when you understand god your next assignment is to understand man when you understand man from the extension of the understanding of man anthropology if you wish you can even bend a bit into demonology before you come into christology because you have to understand man's adversity adversary satan who is he how did he come who are demons where did they come from why was satan disobedient what does he look for today what does he want i pray from the depth of my heart that god will multiply our determination to grow spiritually not our determination to have sermons to preach not our determination to just have a job to do not our determination to just have knowledge to go to school not our determination to just have money and put in our pocket these things on their own do not carry any power your determination to know god so that when you want to grow spiritually make sure you know god but the people that do know their god so there is a consequence for not knowing god weakness and a defeated life then you must understand man because man is the principal tool that god uses for his purposes he's also the principal tool that the devil uses for destruction then you understand the dark world you understand jesus you understand the holy spirit you understand the church and the agenda of the father you understand the times that the future holds and so everything i teach you listen this is one of the ways to test doctrine this is one of the ways to know what is worth your listening to or not anything that is taught by any preacher around the world if it does not sustain an explanation to your mind as touching these areas is a total waste to your christian experience that means every time i hold the mic or any man of god across the globe holds the mic to teach in his sermon there must be a place within all these dimensions where his sermon can help you to gain understanding either in his sermon you learn god you learn man you understand the operation of the dark world is that true you understand jesus and the realities of redemption you understand the holy spirit you understand the church and god's agenda you understand the end times the christian faith has boundaries we don't learn everything and anything our knowledge in the kingdom is predefined there are jurisdictions now let me tell you this there are other lots of other extra biblical materials that you are going to find some of them the bible makes reference to them like the books of Joshua, like the annals of the king is that true the dead sea scrolls and then you will find many other books that sadly have become occultic i'm teaching you this because if you do not manage your appetite with wisdom 
when hunger meets with deception it produces disaster because you see when you are hungry you don't even you are just you just want anything that looks like food and at the end of it people have swallowed all kinds of dangerous things that have destroyed their destinies i remember many years ago coming across a material online just studying and learning maybe like six seven years ago and i came across a material online about the ministry of the holy spirit and the first thing that struck me was the website had the beautiful photo of a woman who was shining very beautiful woman shining like the brightness of the sun and it was written under her ruach hakodesh i said ah god my first prayer was not for myself I've, I've, my first prayer was for everyone connected to me lord let them not come to this website in the name of jesus christ because it's amazing how gullible many believers are you can labor to teach them truth and at the slightest expression of anything that looks glorious they just bend into all kinds of things hallelujah then i decided to just look at what was being said and i was surprised at the things that i saw there all kinds of vain researches that came from wherever they brought all sorts of one research material from this and that and then join everything together at the end of it it was complete nonsense that was just study of it was satanism now but imagine that you are a, as a young believer you are in a season in your life now where you are hungry for god hungry for his power hungry for his grace holy spirit i want to know you i surrender everything to you and if you are not careful and you are not enlightened like this to know the boundary of your search and your pursuit chances are that you will stumble across these kinds of materials and devote them with the determination of a student only for you to realize that those materials just opened up your spirit for all kinds of experiences and you will start having dreams visionary experiences that are purely occultic that begins a terrible journey that's how many people got into many of these experiences you see today others are not open to share it because they are afraid but they just sit down and swallow up nonsense words are powerful words are also keys they can open realms in the spirit and expose you to things that should not be are we together praise the name of the lord right so let's go to our teaching tonight you won't believe that everything i was saying was just a charge to encourage our hearts jeremiah chapter 9 please jeremiah chapter 9 some of you are not diligent students you don't have anything to write whether your device or your material as much as possible you should be except you are doing something that occupies you you should have something come to the house of god with the with the determination of a student no matter how sound what is taught is believe me you do not have the power to gather everything in your mind no you see that there is a limit so make sure that when you come to the house of god you don't stroll around and then don't just pick any piece of paper that you finish and squeeze into your pocket no you have to give some value to your destiny and to your spirit work get a notebook something like this or any notebook you see dedicate it every time you are coming to the house of the lord carry it and don't let anybody make you think you are old school for carrying notes or at least carrying your electronic device they are not the ones who will be there to act life to pity you when you are paying the price for ignoring god are we together Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23 let not thus saith the Lord let not the wise man glory in his wisdom neither let the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches next verse but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me 
that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. I do these things, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Now, this is a very interesting scripture. The common expression in this scripture is the word glory. The Bible says, man can glory, but it says to not glory in wisdom or might or riches but that if there is anything to glory about as a believer it says that you glory in this that he knoweth and understandeth me hallelujah now the glory of god is the expression listen carefully the glory of god represents the expression of all that he is everything that makes god god is his glory and it is clear from scripture that we were created as expressions of the glory of God. This is very important. That we were created and made for his glory. That means my life and your life should be a reflection of the multifaceted dimensions of the glory of God. Listen very carefully. If you pick a say an iphone for those of you who love phones and love technology when you pick an iphone you cannot mistake an iphone for a nokia phone or a samsung is that true because designed in that phone is everything that forces you to know that this is an apple product that is the manifestation of the glory in this case the creativity and the intelligence of that company now this is how it is with god that when god made man god designed in man the potential to be a revelation of his glory what does that mean that means every time men look at you they should never be able to forget about god that means at the slightest encounter with you they should be forced to remember God because everything about your life should point them to one person God are we blessed now so it is important for you to know that you were not just created to serve God you were not just created to live for him as important as that is that there is a dimension of God's desire and God's intention for the making of man that men have neglected for a long time that God created us among many other factors to be the clearest and the fullest expression or revelation of his glory comes from the Greek word kabod the Hebrew word kabod the Greek is doxa it means the weightiness of a thing the essence of a thing so if I ask you Tell me the glory of this phone. You begin to reveal all the features in the phone that makes it desirable. Are you getting it now? So you tell me this phone has um, the memory is very, it has a very large memory. It can perform this, it can perform that. It is water resistant. Even if you throw it in water, it does not spoil. It's made of steel. It's not just made of this. When you give me all of those definitions now, the goal is to make me appreciate both the phone and then by extension the manufacturer. Are we together now? So when we say man is an expression of God's glory, it means that when men interact with you, something about the beauty upon your life your results should compel men to number one glorify god in you as galatians 1 24 says and then to now glorify your father which is in heaven that means if truly you are an expression of god's glory it should be impossible for people to look at you and then not be able to sing praises to the Lord and to thank God for your life my assignment tonight is to challenge you and to show you this reality that until your life becomes an expression of God's glory there is something you are robbing God from enjoying hmm. are we blessed in John chapter 1 and verse 14 the Bible lets us know that the glory of God can be made manifest and men can see it. 
and the word was made flesh he says and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory everyone say we beheld his glory this beholding was not just a spiritual thing we beheld it with our optical eyes that means the glory of god can be seen the glory of god is beyond just smoke the glory of god is beyond just the cloud of his presence those are supernatural expressions of his glory but that the glory of god can be captured and can be made to be revealed here and now he says we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten son of the father and here's our description of that glory that that glory was full of grace and truth so if it is true that i was created in the image and the likeness of god which are expressions of his glory if it is true that i was created for his glory it means that in my faith walk as i live my life serving the lord and serving the purposes of god captured in my life should be a consistent effulgence of god's glory believers most of us have fallen short of this standard our life is far from expressing the glory of god there is no doubt that we love the lord there is no doubt that we seek him sincerely and we want to serve him but men are unable to look at our lives and get challenged and inspired to know him more to love him more because of the excellency of the expressions of glory that is manifested in our lives are you learning something now so the bible says as we behold him we are changed from glory to glory and if we are changed god wants that transformation to happen before men now listen there are different expressions of glory according to scripture different attributes the goodness of god and so on and so forth but when the glory of god is revealed through man there are three principal pillars for expressing the glory of god and this is what i want to teach you tonight never forget this it is impossible for you to say you are manifesting the glory of god without the capture of these three dimensions of expression in your life and as i begin to teach on these three dimensions it is my prayer that you will you will be hungry and even angry in your spirit if you find out that there is any of these dimensions that is not captured because if that dimension is not captured in your christian experience believe me you will not bring glory to the name of the lord the word glory to the name of the lord means praise to his name you will not make him delightsome you will not make him desirable by all nations are you ready jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 29 verse 23 gives us these three dimensions very quickly please let's hurry up the first is wisdom let not the wise man that means the first foundational expression of the glory of god in the life of a man is wisdom you are truly becoming an expression of the glory of god in experience when the wisdom of god is lavishly captured in your life everybody say wisdom write it down say wisdom proverbs chapter 8 proverbs chapter 8 let me do a long reading for us i pray that god will turn someone's life around by this teaching remember what i'm teaching about that it, it is god's desire for you to be an envoy you know what an envoy is an envoy is an authorized representative so when you are an envoy of his glory that means that in and through your life when people want to see what god looks like when people want to see the manifestation of god because until jesus came most people had never seen god so they had to make do with the picture jesus gave them and now jesus said i'm not the only one who will give the picture of god there are many people who are coming who will give you greater pictures of god 
and now we continue to fail woefully in becoming an effulgence of that picture my teaching tonight is to challenge you to make up your mind that in and through your life men would see the glory of god that they would look at your life and know that this is beyond human this one is a manifestation of the glory of god and the first expression of the glory of god foundational expression is wisdom doth not wisdom cry proverbs 8 verse 1 and understanding put forth her voice uh-huh two she standed in the top of the high places by the way the places of the path it's a long reading be patient verse three that wisdom cried at the gates at the entry of the city at the coming in of the doors uh-huh unto you O man wisdom is calling men now i call and my voice is to the sons of man O ye simple understand wisdom ye fools be of understanding heart hear for i will speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things wisdom is speaking now for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing forward or perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to him that findeth knowledge receive my instruction remember wisdom is speaking here and not silver my god that means if wisdom stands here and silver stands here wisdom is advising you he said leave silver and run to me knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that can be desired mention the things that can be desired house car job advancement and all the things we crave for the bible says they are not to be compared with it i wisdom dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions uh-huh the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogance and the evil way and the forward mouth do i hate counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength it says by me this is the part i really love by me kings if it's true that we have been made unto our god kings and priests and we will reign on earth then it will not be without wisdom by me kings reign by me princes decree justice uh-huh by me princes rule and nobles even all the judges of the earth i love them that love me and those who seek me early shall find me riches and honor are with me look up how many people would tell you they are looking for money and you ask them where they say i'm running to wisdom i'm running to wisdom no they will say i'm running to a job i'm running to a business i'm running to some investment i'm running to some uncle but here the bible says if it is riches and honor you are looking for it says they are with me yea durable riches and righteousness my fruit is better than gold yea fine gold and my revenue than choice silver let this be the last verse i lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment someone say wisdom can i tell you this if you give your life to christ that is you get saved and you really begin to walk with the holy spirit and you walk with scripture if after a while a while of immersing yourself in scripture we do not see a lavish expression of wisdom upon your life then you are not manifesting the glory of god you are not expressing the glory of god this is very important in deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9 deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9 the bible says and joshua the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom for moses had laid his hands upon him what was the result of that impartation and the children of israel hearkened to him and did as the lord commanded moses people will not listen to you just because you want to say something 
people will listen to you because of the wisdom the expression of the wisdom of god the nation of israel hearkened to him because he was operating under the influence of the spirit of wisdom colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 paul was challenging us as he did the church in Colossae, for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that he may be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom in all the dimensions of wisdom paul was saying you need wisdom even jesus himself in luke 2 52 he grew in wisdom first in order of priority he grew in wisdom increased in wisdom in matthew chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 from verse 54 matthew chapter 13 from verse 54 watch this the bible says and when he was come into his own country he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished are you seeing that now and said whence hath this man this wisdom and mighty works everybody say wisdom say mighty works say wisdom say great results one more time say wisdom say great results there is a relationship between wisdom and mighty works you can know that the wisdom of god is at work in your life by the kind and the degree of results that are produced in your life you can never never produce small under the influence of wisdom believe me you may be an ordinary man you may be an ordinary woman but let the spirit of wisdom rest upon you and you will find out that your life will move to another dimension still on that scripture let's read to uh, maybe 56 or 57 to tell you that they looked at jesus and they, they they appreciated and identified his humanity is this not the carpenter's son a wise carpenter's son will no longer be called a carpenter's son a wise carpenter's son will be given a new name that wisdom defines the reason why there are some names that are still being used is because you have not embraced wisdom to change your identity so people will still associate you with yesterday is his mother not called mary his brethren james joseph simon and judas 56 are these not his sisters with us he says whence this man had these things wisdom the first foundational expression of the glory of god in the life of a man is wisdom what is wisdom let me define it for you for the sake of this teaching two definitions very quickly number one wisdom is the ability to use the word of god and provide supernatural solutions to every single problem and every single challenge that you face in your life is called wisdom the ability to use the word of god generally speaking wisdom is defined as the correct application of knowledge that is right from a secular standpoint but because we are people of faith and we are kingdom people wisdom is the ability to use the word of god and translate it into supernatural solutions that can solve problems in your life and in the life of others that is wisdom you will never truly be a blessing if the wisdom of god is not at work in you and can i tell you this the highest manifestation of wisdom or the clearest manifestation of wisdom is in the quality of the decisions that you make and the results that follow those decisions you know that the wisdom of god is at work in you because you make superior decisions quality decisions and you can see the fruits of those decisions i tell you the truth many people have not embraced the wisdom of god you can see it in the poor the weak the beggarly the ill-informed decisions 
that people continue to make with their lives and you know that decisions decide destiny you don't choose your destiny you make decisions the quality of your decisions or otherwise will decide your destiny many of us right here are being trapped right now by all kinds of sensual unwise and unscriptural decisions that continue to stop your life from being a reflection of the glory of God so people look at your life and every dimension of your life is poor as far as reflecting the glory of God it must change you came to church tonight to learn that the wisdom of God can function in a man and the decisions of that man suddenly become scripture based not emotion based there are many platforms upon which we make decisions one is emotion two is logic three is scripture the highest is scripture emotions vacillate logic is based on principles those principles only work if they are founded on the integrity of god's word but the highest is the word of god are you learning now decisions superior decisions God is counting on us and our destinies are counting on us to access wisdom and make quality decisions that will take us to a new level. Can I tell you this? You are one decision away from the next level of your life and you are one decision away to go back to yesterday. You can choose to go forward or backwards. That means your decisions can make you have your yesterday as the best day of your life. Or your decisions can make you have tomorrow as the best day of your life. Many people have made decisions that keep them defeated in life. Many people have made decisions that leave them weak and beggarly. Many people have made decisions that turn them to be slaves many in our nation and many in our continents today continue to blame all kinds of things for their problems not knowing that it is the absence of the wisdom of god many preachers many family people many students many young believers many old believers alike many people across the length and breadth of this nation their lives continue to be a recycling of pain because they do not know that it is the absence of wisdom they blame it on government they blame it on preachers they blame it on uncles they blame it on aunties they blame it on relatives they blame it on family members but the real cause for the absence of beauty and color and glory is the absence of wisdom are we together i once spoke with a gentleman who ran away from home and by running away from home means that he followed his friends and just went somewhere that nobody knew simply because he got some money i'm not sure it was more than fifty thousand. to him it was such an enormous amount and based on that frail thinking you see there is no limit to how foolish you can become when the holy spirit in partnership with scripture is not editing your understanding you will think all kinds of mediocre thinking and be so impressed with it until you see the disastrous results that come from that kind of living so eventually the gentleman according to him he went away like the prodigal son and went to leave you know and then the money finished you know how friends will help you spend everything and the guy was stressed he was stranded one thing led to the other got into a police case eventually he came and when i looked at him i asked him one question i said my dear friend would you say that you want to repeat this decision you made he said no i said why he said at the end of it you know if he had known that the decision would lead to this and that statement struck me if i had known very powerful that means the ability to know the outcome before the action is wisdom are you seeing now you don't take the step and find out what will happen the word of god has an array of actions and consequences so that you can choose from 
this is the beauty of the word of god you don't need to ask what will happen when i do this and that no the word of god has for you listed for instance deuteronomy chapter 28 the first 12 verses there about tells you what happens when you walk in compliance with the principles of the kingdom the remaining verses tells you the disaster that can come upon you the choice is yours i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing i advise you choose life that you may live so don't say i took this action if i had known the wisdom of the word shows you the decisions to make and the consequences that follow if you pay attention to the word of god if you pay attention to the truths of scripture deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 says if it shall it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god and observe to do all i have commanded you this day that the lord thy god will set you on high above and all the nations of the earth verse 2 says and these blessings how many of them shall come upon you and shall overtake you so don't be asking a question and say why am i mediocre why are the nations not looking at me the bible already tells you that it's like a doctor telling you drinking water will help to quench your thirst and then help to keep you alive if you find out that you are thirsty and you find out that something is happening to your health you can go back to what the doctor said and said what were the actions the doctor recommended that i kept or that i did not keep is that true this is a doctor here he spent over six to how many years studying consequences of actions is that true there is something that happens to you when a mosquito feasts on your body chances are that you may have malaria so they study how do i avoid it and if i now have the malaria how do i solve it i commend you to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified wisdom is based on the word of god when you limit yourself to the ideas that scripture provides, you will be exceptionally wise but we live in a world that is full of pride even in the height of our confusion we still believe we know what we are doing until we continue to crash like the prodigal son are you seeing it now everybody say wisdom yes there are preachers there are business people there are family people there are families there are ministries sincere people who love the lord with all their heart but they have ignored the wisdom of god and they continue to pay the price again and again and again and again and again giving all kinds of flimsy excuses and not triumphing from one level of grace to the other show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your end listen i propose to you the wisdom of god to help you walk in a path your father could not walk to help you walk in a path don't follow where they followed you will end up like them it does not mean you have to hate them many of you the decisions you are already making with your life right now i can see not prophetically i can see by wisdom you are on your way to disaster decisions of dishonor decisions of laziness decisions of carelessness decisions of lack of spirituality decisions of not knowing the power of relationships decisions of not being valuable these are decisions that already have predictable outcomes I, I don't need to be a prophet i just need to be a student of scripture i can tell you where it leads you to dishonor will close doors lack of relationships will leave you stranded lack of value will leave you poor and mediocre these things have outcomes you want the glory of god to manifest in your life 
waiting for time to change your destiny is a joke anchoring on your degree to be the principal factor to change your life is another joke it's time for you to embrace the wisdom of god and say lord i am tired i my life is already looking like what i do not want i'm already giving flimsy and foolish excuses you see, when your life does not become an effulgence of the glory of God, you are left with no choice than jealousy, than envy, than bitterness. You see it all over the world today. There are people who see wealthy people. There are people who see preachers. There are people who see all kinds of things. It's, it's, everybody has a great destiny in Christ. But it is the absence of wisdom. Don't tell me I was born and bred in Zaria. Don't tell me I was born and bred in, in this state and that state. No. That's not what I'm asking you. You can make a decision from today. And say, Lord, I am tired of making foolish decisions. Some friend just appears in your life from nowhere and says, look, you are my friend. And can call you and say, can you come and meet me in another state? And you are rigmarally not, not knowing what you are doing with your life. From a security standpoint, that is a risk. The person can kill you and make sacrifice with you. Is that wisdom? How about the decision to snore your way through life? As a young person, you've not established anything. No house, no influence, no destiny. Yet you are sleeping at the same rate as a man of 60 and 65 years i can predict your future you will suffer like that person as a preacher you're not diligent to study scripture you're not diligent to pray you're not diligent to fast you're not diligent to submit yourself to learning i can predict your future you will join the bandwagon of jealous, angry, and, and defeated people with very little results. As a husband and as a father, making a decision that is purely cultural, making a decision that is purely advised by different people in all in the name of experience, you are going to crash land your life and your home. This is the perfect law of liberty. Try it seven times. Are you learning something now? I'm challenging you inside and outside. Make sure, get angry. Look at the quality of your decisions. Mark your decisions from January till now. Over 10, score yourself. Some of you is zero, complete zero, not even one. Almost every decision you made this year has landed you in trouble. Don't tell me the wisdom of God is at work there. No. For instance, the financial decisions you have taken. You check your account this year, you see that God has brought something sizable. How much do you have left? Nothing. What did you do with it? Nothing. You spent 500,000 to celebrate birthday. Who came? Nobody. Who said thank you? What did you learn from the birthday? Nothing. Do you have a house? No. And you are the only one taking care of 10 relatives. Is that wisdom? What did you learn this year structurally? Nothing. Intellectually, nothing. Spiritually, nothing. Are the three closest friends to you born again? No, they are just there. Their father is a reverend. Are they born again? No. And yet the Bible says it. Bad company. Everybody shout wisdom. Can I be sincere with you? If you want your life to be an effulgence of the glory of God, you must make up your mind that you are going to walk in the wisdom of God. There are some of you, if we carry your phones now, there is a section for gospel song. Gospel worship song. There is the one the worship team did. There is the one you outsource. And then the other side of the phone contains all kinds of rubbish. You keep counseling what you are getting. Jesus is Lord. And you hear that life is to be lived anyhow. You join two of them. You think God who made your mind is a stupid God for telling you if you are not single-minded. 
if your eye be full of light your whole body you don't need to light the whole body are you hearing what i'm saying now and don't let the devil tell you what i'm saying does not matter see when people try to talk to you ask yourself the person advising you does he have results because some of you have a plethora of advisors most of them defeated people you don't have to hate them but a weak person cannot make you strong a poor man cannot make you rich all this blind loyalty to nothing and people don't learn they don't grow they don't become strong you keep marking time in destiny everybody say wisdom the first expression of the beauty and the glory of god in your life is the wisdom of god mighty works you are a man of god here it's time to start doing ministry the way of wisdom you are a businessman here you are a student here you are a family man here it's time to take the word of god seriously let that become the sponsor of your wisdom and i'm telling you in one month one month under the genuine influence of wisdom you will be surprised what will happen to you oh your rising has come oh Your has come. Listen, do you know? I tell you this sincerely and not to be sarcastic. I've met people this year that I knew for many years, and on seeing them this year, I almost wept. Absolutely nothing has changed. Nothing. Not greater spiritual fire, not influence, not purpose not determination not even finances not that they can become a blessing to anybody most of those people you see once upon a time they had an opportunity to hear what you are hearing don't wait until you start paying the price when you are 40 50 60 then you hear this message there are many messages i've preached in this place there are people who have to go back and start hearing it again and they were there when that message was preached and they did not listen i have taught you that your mentality your mindset is what defines your possibilities not the region you are living in no you keep giving an excuse and say zaria if i'm in lagos or abuja or london or uk it's not true it's not true from where thou art lift up thy eyes northwards eastward westward southward are you learning now the wisdom of god manifesting in your life i want you to get angry with wrong decisions three keys let me give you three keys to help you three keys to make wise decisions number one Three keys to make wise decisions. Number one, ensure that you study the outcome of the decision before making the decision. Ensure that you study the outcome, the biblical outcome, in fact, you want to add that ensure you study the biblical outcome of that decision before making the decision one of the first keys to walk in wisdom study the biblical outcome of that decision then make the decision if you can make do with the biblical outcome of the decision then gladly go ahead otherwise it's good to look at it carefully number two apply the law of faith and patience in making destiny decisions apply the law of faith and patience the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise 
It's good to make fast decisions, but don't excessively hurry yourself. You make wrong decisions that will cost you decades of pain. Are we together? Number one is what? Yes. That means, if someone is proposing a decision for you, don't ask the person about the quality of his decision. Ask the person to defend what the outcome of that decision will be. If you do not know what the outcome of the decision will be, do not make the decision. Make decisions only when you understand what their outcomes are and you are satisfied with the outcomes. And then number two, apply the law of faith and patience. There are times that all you need to do is to sleep over certain things in prayer. And in the middle of the night, the spirit of wisdom will come and help you. Don't be hasty in making decisions, especially destiny decisions. Number three, seek counsel. Seek counsel. Seek counsel. Counsel is like deep waters, the Bible says. And a man of understanding will draw it out seek counsel there are times you just have to be honest enough to admit that i do not have enough factors within my horizon to make this decision therefore let me seek the experience and the wisdom of people with proven results so that i can add to now frame my decisions ultimately you will be the one to make the decision but to be guided is a blessing and no one outgrows the need to be guided are you getting what I'm saying now? Wisdom. Don't be hasty making decisions. Someone this year lost a lot of money because he just met a few people and they said they wanted to sell a property somewhere. He was so excited. They said, are you in it or not? By tomorrow or next week, things will change. And in a hurry, just carried money that was not his own and gave them only to find out that one thing led to the other. And all the stories that follow now eventually maybe the court or police will help him recover his money but I assure you he will not be the same you can recover the money but you can recover the time and the emotional stress and all that you would have gone through if that man had a business partner even after he recovers that money will the business partner work with him again already you have I've seen your decision on display and i've seen where it has led me i'm not ready to follow that road so go in peace everybody say wisdom in one minute you're going to lay your hands on your head and cry before the god of heaven in one minute for some of you i want you to admit it that lord i truly need the wisdom of god in my life i know that there is insufficiency of wisdom and at this word encounter tonight i desire wisdom please pray some of you except for tonight's meeting you are about to make another costly decision it must be scripture based you must have an awareness of the outcome Prata bagada protos koto balaka to se prende ke de beleko siata imprete ke paraka to za zige de balaka siata saprande ke teba there is a way that seemed right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death lord i don't want to live my life in regrets and pain when your word is there for me when the holy spirit is there for me when he the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. It is true that decisions decide destiny. The next level of your life is at the mercy of your decisions. And your decisions at the mercy of the manifestation of the wisdom that you have greater wisdom 
more superior decisions more superior results mighty works indeed this year when we started out in abuja um, a university came in from florida and very wonderful well-meaning people they came and they had been so impressed with what the school of ministry was doing and a delegation was sent from florida to come and they said look um we want to get into a partnership with the koinonia school of ministry help develop the model so that we can have a system where from koinonia school of ministry it's possible for some of your students to just straight have that access to us and you know they can continue their study they can do all of this and then a greater sense of accreditation now there is nobody who will run away from such an offer even if not for yourself imagine the opportunity and how many people imagine the connection with the alumni now imagine using that as a basis even for your visa you see that now but while i listened to them they brought the proposition i had a meeting with them and while they were talking the holy spirit spoke to me and he said in the multitude of counsel there is safety i told them i said i appreciate you people but i'm not an academician give me room let me put together some professionals because this is not just an issue of spirituality you need people who understand the legal implication of this you need people who understand the 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 academic implication of this so just give me some time let me put together a legal team an academic team as a committee and then you do your presentation before them then they can advise me you see that one decision you see ended up the rest is history but it ended up opening other greater doors and other opportunities for me as a person and even for the ministry the spirit of wisdom you would have gone there in the name of big man and just made a rash decision and find out that from next year the average school of ministry student will pay three thousand dollars say for instance and now you are wondering where will they get over 1.5 to pay but you agreed the same way many of you make decisions without considering the full import of it before i wrap up the issue of wisdom i want you to look at all the decisions you have made this year major decisions january february march april may june july there are people living under twenty thousand who decided that they must have six children with no plan to take care of them that looks like a biologically correct decision but from the lens of scripture that is not a wise decision now six children have arrived all you have is twenty thousand the small job you are managing they've thrown you away a gentleman sent me a text i think it was a few days ago um, and he said look his wedding is coming close and he believes in the prophetic dimension of wealth and he wants me to just call for the whole thing and i said okay no problem i'll pray for you but what have you done and he said he's a man of you know some this misguided understanding of faith i'm a man of faith but i asked him in all honesty i said no problem for marriage people can help you people can come together and help you but what happens afterwards what is the lady doing i interviewed him a bit and i found out that even from that disadvantaged position he was the most privileged person from a family of seven i don't need prophecy this guy is going to suffer that poor girl will suffer together with him and their families now these are the decisions that people take and then look behind and people begin to blame god because no man intending to build that's the scripture that should come to give you an anchor should first sit down and count the cost whether he has what it takes to finish are we together now decisions how about people who just got up like that earning jobs of 50,000 60,000 and without any counsel they just said I'm tired 
I went for a seminar. I listened to something, you know. I watched maybe some video online or somewhere and I'm ready to take my destiny and they just quit the job. No job, no business and they sit down. You were earning 60,000 and without any savings because of careless living, you just made up your mind and said, I know my, my Redeemer live it. Four decisions. Are you seeing that now? And as a result, how about families and people who may not have the level of financial wherewithal, but they get up and tell themselves, I will go and live in Lagos or Port Harcourt or Abuja or London or America. It's a different thing if God gave you a word and said, Go. People just get up like that and they deport them back in shame and pain. By me, kings reign. By me, princes rule. Make up your mind from tonight that the glory of the Lord will be made manifest. Can I tell you, when your decisions become superior, people will note you for it. They will know that there is something about the path that this man is taking. There is something. What are some of the wise decisions you can make in your life? Refer to my message that I made one of the months here. Five major decisions that you need to make. The decision to know God and be passionate about the things of God. The decision to be transformed. The decision to be valuable. The decision to have strategic relationships that matter. The decision to pay attention to your health and well-being. All these are superior decisions that when you make them, I make up my mind that from today, my eyes will be on Jesus. I make up my mind that from today, there is no day I will not study the Bible. There is no day I will not pray. No excuses. Quality decisions. I made up my mind, uh, you can tell yourself, I've made up my mind between now and December, I must know the top five people who have influence over my life. As far as friends are concerned, I have to examine them to find out whether these people are taking me to the place of destiny. As a graduate, you are here, I make up my mind between now and December. I must pray and hear from God what is the next step of my life. Not to allow NYSC lead you to the next place. Not to allow all of these things. You have to be able to be intentional to pray. Number two, let's hurry up. Have, have you learned something tonight? The second expression of wisdom, still found in Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23. Let the wise man, it starts by saying, not glory in his wisdom. So we see the glory that comes through wisdom. Number two, there is the glory that comes through power, might. The second expression of the glory of God foundational glory manifestation of the glory of God in the life of a man is power power can I be sincere with you that if you want the nations to see the glory of God manifest and revealed in and through your life there is a dimension of spiritual power that your life must command it has nothing to do with being a preacher but more so if you are a man of God. The power of God reminds you that there is a God in heaven. The power of God is beyond falling down and standing up. Unfortunately, our world today when we say power, what we think about is someone just running around the seat. No. I did a teaching recently in Port Harcourt, Genesis 1 verse 1. Let me teach you this. This was a recent revelation the Lord gave me. The ultimate definition of power in the kingdom. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. The earth was without form, void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. Verse 3. Let's read together. One, to read. Let there be light. And there was light. Keep that scripture. I was studying one morning recently when the Holy Spirit fired this as a revelation. 
that the ultimate proof of power in the life of a believer is and God said and there was and God said and there was that means like God when you say and there is power is at work in your life the highest manifestation of power in the life of a believer is the ability to use words to create possibilities that are consistent with what you have said and God said and there was verse 4 and God saw that what he said that was was good this is the definition of true spiritual power that you sustain the agency to say and then it manifests and that what manifests is good you are truly powerful can i tell you this no matter what you do in this kingdom if you do not get to a point where your words are powerful that what you say happens you will never be able to reveal the glory of god and manifest the glory of god and god said and there was and since i have been created in his image and likeness i should be able to say my path is as a shining light and let it be that my path is truly as a shining light and then i see it manifest that it is good do you know you are a real blessing when you can say over yourself and over people and it happens preachers this is a prayer point go and pray lord and grace me with such dimension of your spiritual power that my speakings will never be barren if i say let it be if i say let it be that way your prayer becomes profitable because you are not making empty words in the name of jesus i declare that my path is as a shining light shining ever brighter in the name of jesus i declare that when men say there is a casting down for me there is a lifting up you are speaking and you know that what you are saying will happen how many things have you said that happened that is the ratio or that is the degree of spiritual power that is at work in your life my god that means i can look at someone and and just tell you in the name of jesus may the lord turn your life around or in the name of jesus may doors open if it does not happen it's proof that you need to press for higher levels of power god who is the ultimate reference shows us his definition of power the ability to say and have it happen question what did you say about your family this year did it happen what did you say about your finances this year did it happen what did you say about your destiny this year did it happen if it did not happen you robbed yourself of revealing the glory of God to an extent it is a call to go back swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there then your day will come is that working you changing everything So everyone is left with this benchmark. What did you say over someone's life? Did it happen? Has it happened? Will it happen? The day people note you for saying and then it happens, it is called integrity. Integrity is integer from the word sameness. That what you say and what manifests is the same. This is beyond just having a positive character and engracing from heaven that you can tell someone who is crying and come to them and say in the name of Jesus Christ. Who are you? I am a child of God. And all these pastors know. Can I speak over your life? And you say, Father, tomorrow by this time, 
Tomorrow by this time. Listen, well, help, help those under the anointing. When you say and it does not happen, there is no power in your life. This thing is not magic. This thing is not fake. If it is not there, brothers and sisters, it is not there. You can't do end time ministry without power. You can give all kinds of explanations. I just sense that there is such a move. I just started sensing this by the Spirit of God. When you say and it happens, that is power. There are many empty people doing ministry today. Just moving around with Greek and Hebrew jargons. And no life is blessed. We, there is a lot of noise in the church. But there is no performance. My God will do this. Man, this one will I'm not being sarcastic. Listen. You must get to a point where your words are precious. Where you don't throw your words like a gun or like arrows wasted. But if and when they come out. Like the words of, of someone who is who is with, with surgical precision. Who will ignore you when your words happen as they say? Archbishop Benson either hosted in his lifetime. I remember a certain time. Please help them. I remember a certain time. This was a story. He was holding a crusade in a stadium. And while he was holding that crusade in the stadium, it looked like the weather and people were not going to come because of the rain. He stood there and he made a decree that the weather would stand still and that the people wherever they were across the mean, that he was calling them by prophecy. And I'm telling you, it was like magic. You hear some of these stories, you think that they are exaggerated. This was how people started feeling like something was drawing them to the stadium. You want to manifest the glory of God? Do not ignore power. It's more than just touching people. The fact that you have to do something is a limitation in that flow. The phone that you connect to a wire and the phone that you talk wireless, which one is more expensive? Those days when there was Nitel, from any house to any house, they would connect and connect and once it rains, you have to carry a ladder and keep moving around. Right now there are cell phones from anywhere. No physical line, but with one dial, you will call somebody from the ends of the earth. If technology can do that, can the words on your mouth go to someone's home, go to someone's life, enter someone's body without a knife, without the surgery of a knife? In the name of Jesus, let me speak over you. I don't know what it is that has stood against you, but by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I bring it down this night. Listen, we didn't invent these things. We learned them from the fathers that have gone ahead of us. When they spoke, they laughed at them. Noah spoke and said, God told me a rain is coming. They laughed at him. And he began to build an ark as proof that what he said would come to pass. Listen to me. Part of the teachings you are receiving is training you. If you are a man of God here, I am encouraging you again. By and large, you will get to a point in ministry where if your words do not carry the power of performance, believe me, you will be as accurate and sincere as possible, but you will live a defeated and frustrated life. There was one footballer that came for Koinonia one time, a gentleman who came and told me he was playing and things were not working. And I looked at him, I said, My friend, I don't play professional football, but there is an anointing. That can distinguish people i told him i said do you believe it and he laughed i said don't laugh i don't know how many men of god you have met in your life but don't you make a mistake of believing everybody is the same 
and he said i believe and i said fine in the name that is above all names i told him i said i place a grace upon you that this grace will announce you across europe and i tell you it was like wildfire this gentleman just went and it was as if there was a force today what god is doing in and through his life the head of pr is here abuja leko is here he would i think he's not here there is this boxer called anthony joshua his family members are currently in abuja waiting because they believe that there is a dimension of the prophetic that you can receive can i tell you this brothers and sisters please hear me when your words become empty people will be tired of saying amen people are not stupid people amen means let it be so let it be so let me pray for everyone here whatever spiritual level you are in by the power of the prophetic word i shift you to a new prophetic level i shift you to a new prophetic level a new level of signs and wonders a new level of grace in the name of jesus christ hallelujah when the storm of wind arose jesus turned to the wind and with one sentence he said peace be still and the wind and they said what manner of man is this that the winds and the waves obey him that means there are lives that are going under all kinds of storm if you sustain power genuine power you can carry the power of the holy ghost and stand before people and say i am the manifestation of the glory of god usually they will laugh at you but then you speak to every storm peace be still my prayer all the time is oh god continue to multiply this grace not for the sake of pride number one so that my life will become like the life of jesus in experience do you know how many people's lives are at the mercy of words that work academic problems problems of fertility problems of evil problems of wickedness witches and wizards sitting on the destinies of men tomorrow is our graduation for school of ministry friday is miracle service how is the miracle service carried out words that is it words what is ministry the communication of the counsel of god and the grace that makes for performance through words pray one minute that from tonight your words will not be empty again 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 empty words that bring shame and dishonor to the name of the lord pray Organado Oh no Organado Organado hallelujah listen listen please look at me look at me we're going to find a place to pray let me show you a scripture power There was a man that in scripture 
had an encounter with Jesus. He was called the centurion. Listen to what happened. He came to Jesus and he said, My little daughter is sick unto death. Please, can you come to my house and help her? And Jesus said, I will honor you. You are a centurion. I will come. And then the man said, No. For I am a man under authority. And by reason of the authority I am under, I say to one, Go. And he goeth. I say to one, Come. And he cometh. I say to one, Do this. So the real secret of power is more than prayer and fasting. The real secret of power is submission. First to the authority of Jesus Christ. Then number two, submission to the authority that God has put you under. I'm giving you a big secret. The man said, I am under authority. And remember what Apostle James taught us. It says, submit yourselves therefore before the mighty hand of God. Then resist the devil and he will flee. I am under the authority of the Roman government. I can say to one, go, without being there physically, and he will go. I can say to one, come, and he will come. Do this, and he will do it. If he does not do it, it's to the shame of the Roman government. What he was saying is, Jesus, I know you are not on your own. Listen. I hope that I'll have a time to teach you. Jesus never called himself Father when he was on earth. If he ever called himself Father, because signs and wonders is not with the Father. Signs and wonders is with the Son. Are you seeing that now? Jesus came and said, I am the Son. He kept saying, I am the Son. I am, even though I am equal with God. The moment I say, I am Father, because when it has to do with power and authority, the one above has to empower the one below. That's how it works. So Jesus said, I am the son of God. He kept saying it. There is an, a government above me. Man of God, it is not because you have fasted and prayed and you get up and say, do this. No. Authority consciousness. Blessed is he who comes. The triumphant entry. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Not in his name. You don't come in your name. Silver and gold I do not have. You see the apostles now? The secrets of their power. But such as I have in the name. This name that we have come under. The sons of Sceva had zeal. But they said, Jesus I know. We see the authority that backs him. Paul I know. We see the authority that backs him. But who are you? Brothers and sisters, you don't just talk and things happen. Believe me. This is not magic. The authority that sends you is the authority that backs you. It's the authority that defends you. There are three major purposes of authority. Number one, provision. Number two, protection. Number three, promotion. Authority provides. The authority that sends you provides. When I send thee, lackest thou anything. Number two, he will protect you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, he, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He, it is he, not I. He makes me. He does this. My job, if he's shepherd, I must admit I am sheep. I am the vine, you are the branches. You see how it works? We desire to see the power of God at work in our lives. But the dynamics is that we must understand that it takes the law of submission. Genuine, sincere submission. If you submit to a man and you don't submit to the authority of heaven, you will still not be powerful. Because it is first from God through men to men. The principal authority is the authority of heaven. My goodness. Do you know the authority of God is so formidable and powerful? 
when a man comes under that authority you become a sign and a wonder ordinary you but marvelously helped by god authority if i give you my atm and there is 10 naira or 20 naira in that atm when you hold the atm and slot it the machine will not refuse to give you money and say you are not the owner the fact that the owner trusted you with that atm what you are seeing here is an atm that is bigger than me no it is god's atm god's ability it's god's ability it's working in me it's working in me it's god's ability God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. Let me say this humorously. Someone asked me a question one time and said, a dear wonderful friend, and he said, But Apostle, you are amazing. How do you leave Zaria and go to the Federal Capital Territory and then get the most expensive facility in that place you have never raised a second offering you don't have official partnership there is nobody who is a major partner or sponsor and as far as we know you are not a thief you are not a criminal you are not doing money laundering and then it's one thing to have a facility but then to now bring people into that facility you can be rich but money does not call people and I told him, I said, my dear one, look at me. Use your brain, not your eyes. Use your brain and size me from head to toe. You went to school. Can a man like this produce that kind of result? No, no, we have to be honest. Just look at me with your intelligence that you went through the 6334 system to get. Can a man like this do you know how long it takes for people to believe you before they come to listen to you for i am a man under authority i say to one go and he goeth i say to one come and he cometh then i say to one do this these are the major things we need in our lives something or someone to go something or someone to come something or someone to do something and he says all happens because i'm a man under authority jesus you are under the authority of the father and on the strength of the backing of your government you can tell one go you can tell one to come and as a result of that what happens there is immunity that comes with you the backing protection provision when i sent you lackest thou anything if i got up and took myself to abuja for instance i would have returned in shame with a serious lesson would have done a weekend conference learning lessons from not hearing god well but when i sent thee lackest thou anything listen to me you need the power of god there are many of you you are grounded right now in your life because you have been saying things that have not happened and if it does not happen you cannot move forward Kai. may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations your children your family your children your children his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and your children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children Ah, 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 oh 
let it be so in my life. There was, and he saw that what he said was good. And Joshua Selman said, and there was, and you said, and there was, what you said over yourself, what you said over your family, what you said over situations and circumstances. Who is this? What manner of man is this? He says that even the winds and the waves so it's not only human things that you talk to you can talk to inanimate things provided you are under the authority of heaven when god sends you he backs you please sit down let's finish up we have to pray jeremiah 9 and verse 23 this is the scripture we are walking on Jeremiah 9 very quickly and verse 23 so there is a glory that is expressed in wisdom number two there is the glory that is expressed in might or power number three there is the glory that is expressed in wealth and riches let me wrap up Psalm 35 and verse 27. Let's hurry up, please. Remember, we are praying that our lives become expressions of God's glory. That even if your life does not capture any other dimension of glory, according to scripture, these are the three pillars of the manifestations of the glory of God upon a life, upon a people. Number one, the glory of wisdom. Number two, the glory of power. Number three, the glory of wealth. Prosperity is the system that gives evidence to the blessing upon your life. Prosperity gives credence to the blessing upon your life. Psalm 35 and verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Now please pay attention. Wealth and riches is... I think probably most people have misunderstood the subject of wealth and riches from two angles. And, and, I've, and I've taught this here in this house one those who are obsessed about money and everything is money 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 to the detriment of their salvation and even the detriment of their relationship with jesus then number two there are those who frown at anything that is money because it's as if money is negative to your spiritual experience so the moment you talk about wealth and riches they just frown don't talk about it but you see in the most basic expression wealth and riches simply talks of sufficiency sufficiency you know what sufficiency means that means you have the capacity to be able to solve whatever needs that may require finances that your life demands as far as your purpose and destiny is concerned as at when it is needed you followed my teachings and you've listened to them both here and in abuja and I've taught you that wealth and abundance, according to scripture, has two main functions. Number one, time redemption. The primary purpose of money is to redeem time. Then number two, for your efficiency. That is it. You see. 
so if god provides you with wealth and abundance what has he given you he's given you capacity to be able to redeem time because your destiny is measured in time listen the moment i say wealth and abundance take away some of this mundane carnal thinking where in your mind you are thinking about some beach with someone lying down and sipping uh coconut you know water inside coconut i'm not saying anything is wrong directly but you see it's those kinds of thinking that does not allow the holy spirit to help you understand what i'm saying sufficiency second corinthians 9 verse 8 and god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work the end is good work and remember according to john 15 verse 8 herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples is that true yeah let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven so if god grants you access listen to me can i tell you sincerely wealth and riches is a true expression of the glory of god do you know why because it takes you out of a beggarly life and a life of limitation to be limited means to see potential and be inhibited from attaining unto it if god grants you access to resources and you can pay your school fees on time or you can build a house or pay for your house rent is that efficiency have you redeemed time if god grants you access to resources and you can send money to your loved ones at home give them an opportunity to celebrate the grace of god if god blesses you enough to be able to bless the house of god this is what we are talking about I've always said it. Imagine with me that I came here right now. I'm in such serious financial need. Let's say I came and saw my house in a mess. And now, you see, imagine the kind of temptation that will work in my mind. One of the ways that we walk in victory is to have sufficiency. So that you have the capacity to even resist any temptation that can come. If as I'm sitting right now, I need money. There is no food for me to eat this night. As a man of God, I've traveled all the way. Chances are excellent that if God opens my eyes and I see pastor right now and I see that he has some money, the likelihood is, is there that I may want to manipulate something out of him. Let me tell you sincerely. And I, I, I say it to the glory and the name of the Lord. You hear promise say it many times when he comes to collect offering. I tell you sincerely sincerely and i say it with a humble heart towards god this ministry you are under is both mysteriously and marvelously blessed blessed by god in a way that every demon in hell knows that till jesus comes the subject of insufficiency and lack and limitation the only limit to this ministry is the voice of the spirit and the law of process this was not attained by luck our fathers have showed us the possibilities that this can happen and we believed it but remember oh lord you are my god psalm 63 i long to see your power and your glory in my life as i have seen in the sanctuary that means take the possibility in church bring it to my life too you can walk in the realm of noiseless wealth and abundance not bragging and talking nonsense you 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 leave that realm you know that god has settled you and sorted your life with gratitude and joy with the dignity of kingdom integrity thinking about money is dangerous it interrupts your prayer life it interrupts your your love life as far as god is concerned you can have the time to serve him and this is what right now many of you arguably and those following online it is very possible that this may be the demon hindering your love and your passion for god this is november now in a few weeks now christmas and the rest and there are people who are now almost depressed 
PTA letters are flying around, incrementing everything except salaries. Let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say, The Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. When I started out with God, I made up my mind that under God, no matter what price it is in Christ, I will pay to find a way out of this thing, this demon of interruption. And I bless the Lord for that decision. For someone you may be hearing me, and God is telling you you need to make that decision. Let me tell you what not to do. Which business will lift me? You are about to recycle pain. No. Business, job, investments, all those things give expression to your understanding. The first thing to work on is the superiority of your philosophy, not business. No. Believe what I am teaching you. I love you, that's why I am teaching you what I am teaching you. But if anybody ever tells you a blessed life and a life of ease does not allow you to serve the Lord acceptably in truth, tell that person he's a liar. By the privilege of God's grace, thank God for the little that we're able to do in the life of people. When I see some of these, my children, after service, I hug them and love them. I've missed you people, but they are the real people I've missed. You see, and when I see them and I celebrate them, for the few that were able to do so much think how many people right now you can bless forget about yourself no matter how conservative you are when the attention is on you 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 see nothing really ever satisfies you until you use it for a cause bigger than you this is how god designed it The reason why many people do not really see the revelation behind this is because they are selfish people who don't think about others. Once you are thinking about yourself and what you want, you may not want very much. But when you think about others, there are people today who have gone to school like I taught on Sunday, for those of you who may have listened to the message, because of the house of God. I am honored to do what I do for people. I'm not afraid to say it. I will continue to help people till Jesus comes. Not because I am a man of God. I will do it with joy. I do it because I love Jesus. But I also do it because the means is there. That is the truth. You have to be willing and able. If you are willing alone, it cannot work. If you are able and you are not willing, you need to be willing and able. Many of you here, by reason of the things you have learned in this house, I know you are willing, but you need to be able. The glory of God needs to manifest. There is only so much clothes you can wear, my dear people. This is all the stomach you have. It's, one is not coming from any other place. So there is only so much you can do. How many cars can you drive? How many things can you do? But what a joy to see Jesus revealed through your life. I have, I have received text messages that brought tears out of my eyes. Apostle, thank you for what God has used you to do in our family, maybe financially. Thank you for what you have done in the life of my son and my daughter. And sometimes I just go down my knees and I say, Lord, even if I were never a preacher, thank you. Because one day if Christ tarries, will not be here. But you see, the hymn writer says, Thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling. He says, only to be remembered by what we have done. There are people today I see and they come and hug me and say, Apostle, I know you may not be able to remember me, but one time you came to our house and you did this and that, and look, I was able to go to the school. You know, a gentleman met me, he came happy, bought me some things, and he said, um, I was doing my master's and I was stranded. I think it, it spilled into another year of school fees, and I came and met you, and you were able to help me. You see, most preachers will not say what I'm saying because they are afraid. Because when you hear this kind of thing, your phone will be full of text after the grace immediately. Sir, just like you did to that person. Oh. <laughs> I'm also part of Koinonia. Prosperity takes away fear. That is the truth. Listen, I'm not bragging. Oh. Don't just clap without it entering your head. This is what we keep saying. Truly, it takes away fear. Look at all this quarrel between relatives and families. Okay, this one was neglected in the sharing of bread. You remember what happened with the Christian 
you know women in the bible in the heart of revival the fire of god falling everywhere people receiving jesus the gospel advancing the issue of welfare came in and it was almost going to cripple that agenda and the apostle said no 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 don't disrupt us we are on a mission to see jesus revealed so set people here let us manage this whole thing that you can be so blessed that no matter the greed of anybody in your family it has no effect because by the grace of god all these things that give people headache useless prayer three hours crying for what wisdom can solve whereas there are souls there is your destiny there is your spiritual growth there is fellowship with the holy ghost i'm saying it without fear i didn't steal anybody's money the blessing of the lord make it rich look pay your price with honor cry when you are paying it let people laugh with you but i tell you there is something called the wealthy place that god can bring you into you can enter your sabbath and then now with the beautiful heart god has given you you will now teach people what to do with the blessings of the kingdom how much food can i eat how much water can i drink how much clothes can i wear naturally i come from a conservative background so the bits that god is doing in my i am already too honored that is a privilege for god to even be able to trust me with these things remember in this kingdom there are we don't achieve anything we are trusted with it the moment you carry an achievers mentality you are defeated in this kingdom let it not be that when you have built houses you have built this you say there are some of you the day god blesses you with five hundred thousand one million ten naira twenty naira nobody will hear you again your parents will have to bow down and lick your feet leaders here in this house have to come to you and bow down and lick your feet it's nonsense it's for you for you to be glory for you to be lifted all i want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Forgive me if I sound arrogant as I tell you these things. I'm not saying it to lie to you. You are my people. I should not come here and deceive you. Make up your mind that through wealth and abundance in your life, God's way. You will reveal the glory of God, void of greed, void of covetousness, with a pure heart and a sincere conscience that you can serve God with joy and gladness. I thought we'd be able to do our building this year. We're just trying to finish all of the legal things that need to be done so that we don't start any building and have development control come and harass us. And it's laborious. Many of you understand doing a church thing in this region is terrible you can have it for years and then eventually you see what happened somewhere in uh, yes last time i came we visited there and my heart bled when i saw the houses of people over 200 homes i'm sure some of you were affected look how painful that is but i remember when i was having a discussion with some of the architects and the people and when they finished everything and they drew up the plan and i saw the total cost of what it would take from ground till we till finish tears came out of my eyes because i went back and said god only a fool only a fool says in his heart there is no god i was shocked myself at what i saw i thought it would be far greater than that and this is even because of the economy i looked at it and said are you sure and the people were even afraid this is it listen no no i'm i'm not boasting i'm not boasting because some of you this is what you like all you will, all what i've been laboring say now will evaporate because of something that relates to carnality get what i'm telling you i'm just saying this to inspire you i said in that case then it means we can look for another property somewhere 
and buy let's use the wisdom of the catholics that everywhere we find land we keep buying 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 for the future my brothers and sisters this man talking to you in this same zaria many years ago you've heard my story is bread that i will buy remember bread and granite with 10 naira ginger and straw inside what changed not zaria zaria did not change what changed so when i talk to you don't think i'm some white man who came from somewhere coming to twist my tongue and speak english i live in europe and america no from where thou art lift up your eyes it was a decision that i made many of you have not made that decision you are just happy with anything success you can sleep in peace knowing that you owe no man nothing but love let me tell you it's going to be a difficult journey becoming truly blessed in the kingdom you will pass through the valley of the shadow of death but if you sustain the courage and the stamina he that endures to the end he will be given a white stone some of you right now are going through financial seasons that may be unpleasant find rest the glory of god can still be revealed in this you've heard me say i will never be the man of god help him please i will never be the man of god who will just come and teach you on your spiritual life a number of you here i presume are students and you see as a student the scope of your spiritual adventure is just passion for god your academics and purpose because you don't have any you are not you are not in any leadership responsibility that commits you so most times the way you teach and train people who are on campus the way we used to teach and train people say 10 15 years ago cannot be the way we are doing it now because the people of 10 15 years ago now have added responsibilities to their life at that time some of you are still receiving tips from your parents you know just support here and there so it is true that your the entire scope of your pursuit will just be your spiritual life purpose love consecration you know and all of that and that is true but the time comes to your life when other dimensions that are needed for life and godliness if not captured in your life you will be discouraged and the little you have held you will even lose it out of frustration many people today who are not serious with god were pastors when they were in zaria or in their various campus fellowships you see most of them today there is nothing god around them again at best they are just regular people these were people who god would have done mighty things with do you know what the problem was when these other dimensions of the kingdom came religion made them to reject it and now it's 15 years 10 years it looked like one day and many are yet to have a grasp of it can i tell you the truth finance is not one of those things you want to understand late they that seek me early will find me i'm going to pray for you now god desires to see his glory manifested please help us in your life God desires to see his grace manifested in your life you see the little that God is doing in and through this ministry the little that God is doing in and through my life and compared to where we are going this is just kindergarten God is moving us from glory to glory because that's what the Bible says but you see my greatest desire is that at the end of my life with all the supposed accomplishments personally and in ministry the greatest testimony that i covet is the testimony of enoch and enoch walked with god not an enoch built churches not and he made a name not he became a leading man of god across the earth thank god for all of those things sometimes i see a list of all my ministrations the things i'm doing and the places i'm going and i say dear lord look at this and I just remember his strength and grace is sufficient. But then I pray a prayer for myself. I say, Lord, take my eyes away from these things. And the deception that comes with them. The deception of fame. The deception of name. The deception of titles. People can sincerely clap you. 
and once they are clapping they are saying look that in a, with a sincere heart they are encouraging you but if you let those things get to you then you start going down and you become a lesson for others i can tell you being great is very hard it is not as easy as you think you've heard me teach that the easiest part is becoming maintaining greatness is very difficult but when you have this understanding that he's made me what i am so that his glory can be revealed that's it my best lord is everything i am my best lord i give all i have to you you made me great you made me special you made me great I give all I have to you. Hey, you made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. See, I wrote this song many years ago because I saw these days coming. I said, when I wrote this song, I was in one room, but I wrote it. And one day, the nations will join us to sing. Because they will see that we said it and it became. We sang it and it became. For some of you today, you are hearing it as my song. Tomorrow it will be your song. It's with tears you will stand. Great preacher. Great family. Blessed life. Visionary leader. Blessed all around. And people will ask you, how did you achieve this? Quickly, the Holy Ghost will bring you to my message. There are no achievers in this kingdom. We are all trusted with these things. And then you will join us, sing this song again. My best Lord, it's everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. My best Lord, it's everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. Listen to me. Why have I taken time to teach you what I taught you tonight? Because God is depending on us. I thank God for the privilege He has given me to inspire millions of life across the globe. Preachers, individuals, businessmen. They have looked at my life and looked at what is happening in the ministry. And they have said, truly, there is a God in heaven. I have seen people who quit ministry. I'm not doing again. But by the privilege of the bits that God is doing through our lives, they could find hope and say, look, if God could use this man, I'm going back to the vineyard. This is what this is about. That for someone who is dying, someone who is already at the end of his life, when God talks to him in similitude, he may not understand. So what God does is he picks you and he says, stand before him. And he says, this is what I'm trying to say. I can make men. I don't understand, oh God. Look at him. Now I understand. I can lift men. Lord, I don't understand the parables. Look at her. Now I understand. You become the the point of clarity for what God is saying. So when God says I can bless, I can anoint, I can lift, I can prosper. It's not unusual for people to not understand God but then he draws you and elevates you in a position like this and tells the nation, this is what I wrote in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. Do you now understand? They will say yes and they will run to Jesus. Please hear me my dear people. Your limitation is not Zaria. I've told you this. Your limitation is not the territory. Your limitation is not your family or your village. You're not the first to come from that point. From where you are. I want you to know that God designed and created you for beauty and glory. Unfortunately, there are things that I've taught tonight that I know some of you have not believed it yet. And it's not your fault. When you have spent 20, 30 years under the influence of wrong teachings, wrong mindsets, it will not just take a day, it will take a while. Hmm. Arise, shine.
the Bible says. That's what God is telling someone. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That's what God is doing. He's lifting you beyond that place of limitation. Apostle, the house that I live in right now, where my family stays, there is no zinc. We had to use tampoli. Don't worry. Don't define yourself by all those things. Submit yourself to this truth and make a covenant with yourself that if a blessed life, if I was not part of a blessed life, a blessed life will come out of me. If I was not part of an anointed life, an anointed life will come out of me. Whatever you suffered, don't transfer it. Don't transfer pain. Don't transfer limitation. Don't transfer weakness. Man of God, you came from a background where there was no sound preacher that rose from where they were to become a global voice. Make up your mind under God and for the sake of the name of Jesus that God will find that privileged vessel in you. It's a decision that I made. I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever it is that they say could not come out of Nigeria, out of Africa, and out of my lowly estate, that let it please the Lord to lift me, not for the sake of myself, no, but for the sake of His glory. Hear me? Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. So there is the glory of God that is expressed in wisdom. Number two, let not the strong man glory in his might. There is a manifestation of God's glory in power. You say it, it becomes, you see it, and what you see is good. Number three, there is the glory that is manifested in wealth and riches to the end that you have all sufficiency show me a man who stands with this tripartite supports the wisdom of God the power of God the sufficiency of God you will become such a beautiful display of the glory of God first to yourself and then to your generation this is my first message for us tonight. Tomorrow we are going to be graduating our school of ministry students joyfully. And I hope that they will be inspired to become all that God destined for them to be. Friday, again we will be having our last miracle service for this year. The wonder working power of God all through this year. And this is what is happening. Listen to me. I want you, as we prepare to rise to make a pledge and a commitment to yourself. Lord, I'm not going to listen to this and be angry and jealous in the future because of my negligence to these things I've heard. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Man of God, there are greater horizons of impact waiting for you. No matter how small you are, maybe a prayer group today, maybe a group of people, you may even be alone, Still in the school of the spirit. Do not allow anybody bully your destiny. God is making you. You may be a businessman in the making. You may be Esther in the making. You may be Deborah in the making. Do not despise yourself. Do not despise your training. Submit yourself to the things that make for the manifestation of the glory of God. Listen to these teachings. Be intentional about it. And watch your life rise from one level of glory to the other. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. I want you to begin by thanking the Lord for what you have heard tonight. Thank Him from the depth of your heart Lord I thank you for the power of your word is someone thanking the Lord say thank you Jesus for that which you have
Hallelujah. In fact, before we finish praying, let me just make the altar call before we finish praying. I just sense in my heart. Let's remain standing. You are here tonight and you either came here for the first time or you have been here again and again. Any of the overflows at all and following online and you are saying, Apostle, while I heard you speak, I know that I have not made this decision to be serious with Jesus or even to surrender my life to Him sincerely. Now, nobody will force you. Your life is yours. It's a gift. But I can tell you, it is wise to hand it over to Jesus. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep. He only keeps that which is committed to him against that day. Wherever you are. I'm going to count one to three. Two groups of people. Those who are saying, Apostle, I'm looking for Jesus desperately. And this is my first genuine decision. Or those who are saying, Apostle, I don't know what has happened this year. My life is not the way it should be. I can't lie to myself. I can't deceive myself. I need Jesus. I'm counting one to five. Wherever you are, run like there's fire on the mountain. And come and stand here. One. If you are coming, run and come and stand. Literally, you have heard the word of God. Kazanji Soroba. Come. You are coming from outside. Run quickly. Come and join them. Bazanji Soroba. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? Come. Hallelujah. If you're joining them, please come. I celebrate and salute every single one of you for making this noble call. Coming to Jesus is not like going to a funeral, it's like coming to receive an award because you are receiving the greatest gift any man can have in this side of God's kingdom the gift of the life of God whether you are making this decision for the first time or you are rededicating your life this is unto Jesus please lift your right hand thank you for coming lift your right hand and if there are any ones outside or following online just lift your right hand to Jesus say this after me let it be from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart i have heard your word tonight i declare that jesus is lord savior and king over my life i declare that from today i receive eternal life into my spirit the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever i am a child of god amen keep your hands lifted lord jesus we thank you it remains an honor to see many come to you week in week out these ones have come declaring their need for you i declare based on the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven give them a new beginning from tonight in the name of jesus I declare that you are partakers of his divine nature and that you continue to go from glory to glory in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now very quickly, please look at me, those in front. I appreciate you. Thank you for making this decision. Just follow. There's a gentleman waving his hands and smiling at you. Please all of you in concert, just follow them. Um, the officials will have your details for a minute or two and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Let's celebrate them as they go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, we're going to, for sake of time, we'll combine the three prayer points in one. All of these three areas, wisdom, reflected in mighty works. Listen carefully. Let me establish the prayer points. And I've told you the litmus test of your wisdom is your decision, as seen in the life of Solomon. 
the moment solomon received an understanding heart which the bible tells us made him the wisest man the very proof that he had it was a decision a complicated decision that he needed to figure out and he figured it out with wisdom and his fame went abroad number two is power the holy spirit's power genuine biblical power the capacity to say and it happens in your life and in the life of others and then number three the blessing of the lord translated into sufficiency wealth riches that can help you to redeem time can help you to be effective can help you to live a comfortable life can help you to contribute in the advancement of the purposes of the kingdom and can help you to be a blessing to humanity it is a beautiful thing to have the privilege of being an extension of the hands of jesus even to as many and so you're going to pray these three prayer points in the next one or two minutes please pray it from the depth of your heart lord the grace to reveal your glory in these three dimensions go ahead and pray Please pray. Shibalako Sata Brande Gedimana. Are you praying? The glory expressed through wisdom. The glory expressed through power. The glory expressed through sufficiency. Pray for your destiny. We sing glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. You pray. Glory to God through my life. Glory to God. In my life, glory to God forever. I love you. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Galatians 1 verse 24 A scripture that I found many years ago and it would never leave me And they glorified God in me And they glorified God through the wisdom that was expressed in and through my life 
and they glorified God through the manifestation of his manifold power at work in and through my life and they glorified God through the manifestation of his sufficiency that validates the fact that he is love validates the fact that he is almighty I will continue to drum it that none of these things we say and do is for the building of any personal empire no the moment your message your testimonies and all that you do become for self glorification you've already lost it everything points to Jesus Jesus revealed Jesus glorified Jesus revealed Jesus glorified his wisdom revealed Jesus glorified his power revealed Jesus glorified his sufficiency revealed Jesus glorified the entire journey is for him being glorified now in one minute as a family of faith I want us to pray for the graduation tomorrow on behalf of the now graduates I like us to declare that the power of God will be so marvelously released upon his people go ahead and pray pray for grace pray for wisdom is someone pray pray for grace pray for wisdom pray for grace pray for wisdom pray for grace pray for wisdom pray for grace now pray for the miracle service on Friday Lord let there be such a marvelous move of the spirit one more time for this year oh God in the name of Jesus let there be a move of power let there be a move of grace heal the sick turn lives around in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah but I hope you have been blessed tonight now let me just speak over your life so that to wrap up for the night in the name of Jesus Christ I come with great news of glad tidings and I pray that good things will begin to happen to you from tonight in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that even over the city of Zaria and over our lives let there be massive angelic activities all through this week in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that any question you have been asking may the Spirit of God bring answers I decree and declare that you are blessed you are secured you are protected in Jesus name go and excel and enjoy the peace of God the lines are fallen for you in pleasant places and you have a goodly heaven